Today, we're going to talk about how to get the most out of GitHub Copilot and explore some of the amazing features we have that goes beyond your editor, right? So let's get right into the presentation. So like Renal said, I'm Kadesha and I work at GitHub as a developer advocate. I've been a software developer for about four years and I really, really enjoy creating technical content online. You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and sometimes Twitter, though that's where I've been living um, these days. I'm also Jamaican, and so you can always find me hunting for Jamaican food in a new city that I go to. But let's get right into the content. So today we're going to go over a brief overview of what GitHub Copilot is. Just in case you're not aware of what the tool is, I'm going to be sharing some tips on how to get the most out of GitHub Copilot with VS Code specifically. Uh, and then we're going to look into, we're going to look at some of the features that we have that's not only in your editor with GitHub Copilot, right? I'm also going to do a live demo today. And then if there's time, we'll have some Q&A and I'll share some resources with you. Now, what is GitHub Copilot? So GitHub Copilot is the world's most widely adopted AI developer tool. And this tool helps you to code faster in your editor. It's also in your in your terminal with the GitHub CLI. It's also on GitHub.com, right? But when it comes to using GitHub Copilot in your editor, it helps you to write unit tests, to write documentation, to write Terraform scripts, to build GitHub action workflows. It helps you to explain code, to synthesize code. It also helps you to, you know, understand code that you're unfamiliar with, like get started in a repository a lot sooner. GitHub Copilot has become an integral part of my development workflow personally. And I hope if you've been using it, you find the tool super helpful and super knowledgeable, right? And when it comes to using GitHub Copilot in VS Code, here are a few of my best tips, right? So in VS Code, we have something called agents. We have a few agents in VS Code, one of which is the at workspace agent. And the at workspace agent is aware of your entire directory. And so it will help to give GitHub Copilot a bit more information to provide you with the best answer to your question. Now, we also have a, a way for you to reference specific files with Copilot chat specifically. So you can do like hash file and then a pop up will come up and then you can select a file and give it to GitHub Copilot and ask questions about that file um, and so on and so forth. I'll be showing you how to do that reference seeing a file today. We also have sparkles in GitHub in VS Code for GitHub so Copilot. So sparkles are, are nested throughout the editor, so you can find it embedded right in the editor where you write your code with your files. You can also find it in the section where you would stage your changes and click on the sparkle and you'll get some commit messages. And I've also seen sparkles in the terminal. Um, so that's another way that you can easily access and quickly access GitHub Copilot in VS Code. GitHub Copilot is also here to help you with your terminal, right? So if you ever receive an error message in your terminal, if you highlight that error message, right click and click Copilot Explain, Copilot will help you to debug your code right there in the terminal. You can also remove irrelevant conversations from the chat interface on GitHub Copilot. Pilot. I'll show you this as well. We have some quick actions or what we call slash commands. And these slash commands help you to quickly, you know, get like testing, write documentation, um, explain code, fix code, and so on and so forth. You can write comment messages, like I said, with Copilot. And we have what's known as Copilot inline chat, where if you need to just do something really quickly in your in your files, you can just do command I or control I to get the chat interface pop up right there next to your code and you can ask questions and get suggestions that you need very quickly. Another great thing to know is that you can enable and disable Copilot anytime or GitHub Copilot anytime you want right in your edit editor. So like sometimes when I'm writing Markdown or even sometimes when I'm in a Python file, I'll disable Copilot because I don't want suggestions. But when I do want those suggestions, I just re-enable it and we're good to go. Now, I want to show you exactly 
what this means. And a part of my demo today is showing you how Copilot is beyond your editor. So GitHub Copilot extends beyond just your IDE. It's in the CLI, it's on your mobile phone, and it's on github.com. So we're going to take a look at all that today. I've created a short demo repository for you. So if you go to gh.io forward slash streamlet, you'll be able to get access to that repository. Now, a lot of times I want to get started in an open source project, but I don't have time. So today I figured, oh, I could do a demo of learning how to use Streamlit with GitHub Copilot because another use case for GitHub Copilot is like getting started in repositories a lot faster or like starting to use a new tool or framework a lot faster. And Streamlit is a framework that allows you to build data applications quickly like quickly and promptly and like you get to share a link with others on the web because you can deploy it. And so I have this Jupyter notebook here and this notebook is based on this CSV file, this flight.csv file. And this notebook essentially builds a logistic regression model that predicts whether or not a flight will be delayed based on the day of the week. And so I wanna take this data and I want to ask Copilot whether or not I can actually implement Streamlit in this file. So I can open up the chat here. And just in case you've never installed GitHub Copilot, you would go to your extensions and you would search for, I like to just search for Copilot, and then you would install these two here. I did do an update and I forgot to restart, but that's okay. So let's just click on the chat icon here, and then you can know GitHub Copilot is active when you see the Copilot tab right down here. So I can start by asking, can I use, can I use Streamlit in this app? And let's see what it says. All right, yes, you can use Streamlit. That's great. I thought so, because it is a data application. To use Streamlit, I need to install it, all right? And then it also gave me a suggestion on how I can get that up and running. Okay, great. Let's take this code and let's save it into a new file. I'm going to call this app.py. And then I'm going to take this install installation command and if I click this terminal button here, I can just pop that in my terminal. Do pip install streamlet. And see what happens. I did go ahead and pre-install streamlet because I didn't want anything to happen during this live demonstration. So let's go ahead and run the command that it told us to run to start up our streamlet app, right? So I can click on this terminal button here and I'm going to change the name from scripts.py to app.py. Hit enter. And it should open up a new browser window for us. OK, so we have an error message that says name PD is not defined. So it looks like pandas is not importing properly. Let me make sure. Where is that error coming from? Let's see. Okay, so what I can do is I can highlight this error. And I see what the issue is. It's because pandas is not imported. But just to show you, just in case I don't get another error message, I can highlight the error message in my terminal. I can right click here and I can do copilot explain this. And it's going to give me um, an explanation of what's happening here. And so right there, I took my error and I popped it in the chat and it says it's saying because PD for alias pandas is not defined and it says I need to import pandas, which I did previously to so that being completed. Okay, let's save and let's go back to the browser. Loading, loading here. That's a cute little animation. And there we go, my first app. And so this is a demo app. It's not based on our data set at all. And so I want to go back and I want to ask it, 
how can I actually use this in my with my data set? So remember earlier I said you can attach a file when using Copilot. So I can say, what can I do with Streamlit and my um, data? And I can click File and I can attach the CSV file here. And I can say, um, please show me some examples. I always like to say please. I, I do I do actually talk like that when I'm chatting with GitHub Copilot and any AI for that matter. Okay, here are a few examples of what you can do. So it says I can do some data exploration. Nice. I can do data filtering data visualization, so I can create charts and stuff based on the data, interactive maps, if I have like latitude and longitude present in my data. And I can also do machine learning. Wow. I didn't know you could do so much with Streamlit. That's actually pretty cool. All right, let's start up here. I'm gonna highlight this entire file. And if I click on this button here, it's going to pop over the suggestions. OK, and here you see GitHub Copilot is giving me some ghost text suggestions right in my editor to display the data as a table. But I want to keep going here and I want to keep accepting the suggestions I got from Copilot chat. So it's showing me unique carriers. It's going to create a drop down for the user to select a carrier. All right filter the data and then display the data that the user selected. All right, that's a pretty good example. Data visualizations is going to have a bar chart. It looks like st.bar chart. That's a pretty nifty way. I really like the syntax of um, Streamlit and I could do boop for latitude and longitude. I don't believe I have latitude and longitude in my data, but I'm curious to see what displays. If there's an error message, I will, you know, remove it. Random forest regressor. Hmm. Let's see what this outputs. Here. Uh, let's pop these imports up top. And then let's go to the browser and see what we have. So far, I'm really liking uh, Streamlit. Oop. Refresh. Running, running, running. But how cool is that though? Like I was able to use a brand, a new open source project that I've been wanting to use for so long um, with the assistance of GitHub Copilot. And so here you see a data set. Okay, we may need to add some titles or, you know, some headers or something. You have select carrier. Okay, if I select a new carrier, Oh, okay, so it filters by the carrier and I can see all the data for that. That's pretty nifty. Um, I have a chart here and then I have an error because as expected, I don't have latitude or longitude. Okay, so let's go back and I'm actually just gonna remove this map here. And you can see the sparkle command come right here that I was telling you about. If I click it, Copilot Chat pops up right in line for me to you interact with. But I'm not going to interact with that today. I really want to see what this um, random forest regressor model does, if it even displays on the UI. Could not convert string to float, WN. All right. Let's take a look at that. Actually, what I can do is let's just copy everything, right click, ask it to explain. Due to trying to fit a model with categorical data, right? I was like, I don't think I can use that to do it, but let's skip over doing any type of modeling for now. Right, I was like, I don't think that's going to work. So let's remove this. And I actually want to add 
some titles here. I think it's um, st.title. Let's ask a pilot. How do I add a header or a title? Okay, so it is sd.title. Okay, that's a good convention. That's what I was thinking. Uh, I could copy this. I could pop it at the top before. Nope. Copy this. Pop it at the top. And then I'm already loading the data frame. Okay. And I think I should probably use header here. And then maybe in here I could use I see dot title. Okay, thank you, GitHub Copilot for that. Where else do I need to add a like a little bar thing? There we go. So my flight data app. Okay, that's a little bit flight data analysis. Okay, that's giving me a bit more information. Let's add another one for the bar chart. SD dot title number of flights by carrier that looks good okay that looks good i've seen some examples of streamlit apps where they had like a like a side menu thing i'm not sure how to do it so let me ask how do i add a sidebar is that what it's called even i'm not sure if you've used Streamlit, bear with me. <laughs> it's actually my first time using it properly. And I'm super happy to see it being used in this way. I don't need sklearn anymore, so I'm going to take that out. Okay, so sd.sidebar. All right. Selected carrier sd.sidebar.select. You can use sc.sidebar functions. Here's how you can modify your code to add a sidebar. Okay. Filter data is here. Selected carrier is here. But how do I, how do I, it's adding a drop bar to the sidebar, but how do I like, how do I create the sidebar? Oftentimes I see people whenever they don't get like the response they're looking for on the first try, like they give up, but you have to keep prompting it. You have to like keep asking it for what you want. It's just like having a conversation with, with somebody, right? Just keep asking it and it will give you. Okay. So it's telling me the same thing. So maybe this is how I create a sidebar. Let's try. So I'm going to add it after carriers. Like so, save it. Let's go here. Oh, there it is. Okay, so <laughs> I was mistaken. Um, I was mistaken, but this is pretty cool. Okay, there are multiple SD dots that bought widget, widget with the same generated key. All right, please, fix, please pass a unique argument here. So another one I'm going to throw to my assistant here. To fix this error, you need to pass a unique key argument to each. Yep, it did say that. Here's how you can do it. So I just want to replace this, clicking this, and that should be good. So go back here, refresh, Alrighty. That looks good. So I have some more to show you outside of the editor, but essentially like this is how this is how you would use it, right? And let's say I didn't show you inline chat, but if I wanted to use inline chat, I could go to the server that I created for the uh, based on the model and I can hit command I. And if I want to quickly add some tests, I could just do that with slash tests. And then I could choose to accept or discard the unit test here. If I hit create, it's going to pop these tests in a brand new file for me, which I really, really like. 
and then I can run the test and validate the test and see if, you know, like debug any errors and continue to do so. Awesome. We have some pretty good stuff here. So I am going to do a quick staging. Let's stage. And then if I hit the sparkle button here, I can get a commit message right there. Add Streamlit app and test. Yep, that's exactly what we did. And now I can push the Streamlit branch. Oh, we're on the VS Code branch. That's actually not what I wanted to do. Another way to use GitHub Copilot is right in your terminal with Copilot in the CLI. So I can use the alias ghcs and I can say undo last commit and keep the file changes on this branch. How many times have you ever like committed the work that you did on the wrong branch and you forgot the command to do so? I forget these, this command all the time. So if I do that, I can copy the command, pop it there, hit enter, and there we go. Everything's on stage, the commit has been undone, and then I can create a new branch. I wanna call this branch streamlit. Okay, cool. So let's restage. I think everything's already staged. Yep, yep. So let's do a commit, add flight data analysis and prediction tests. That's not what we did. <laughs> Everything stayed, yeah? Is this, that's an interesting comment. Message. Let's try again. Add flight data app and test server. Not quite, not quite, not quite. It worked the first time, but it's, it doesn't seem to be working right now. So I'm just going to go ahead, get commit dash M, streamlit app and test. And then let's push to the repository because I have some good stuff to show you there. No. <gasps> What's happening? Oh, I spelt it wrong. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let us actually click here it's gonna take me here select the proper repository and i want to show you one of my favorite features on github.com and this is an enterprise feature but um gone are the days when you submit a repository without a description because you can use copilot in prs like copilot pr summary to generate a description for you um, and so what this is going to do is it's going to look at all the work that you did, all the diffs. Et voila, we have a wonderful description that actually includes like code diffs that we can click on here. And there we go. So let's say you were assigned to as a PR reviewer of this um, pull request. Uh, if you want a quick way to like kind of get an idea of what the Streamlit app is doing, because you're also not familiar with it, I can actually click on this button, attach whatever file I want, and I can start a chat right here about this file. Looks like this isn't indexed. Oh no, okay. Indexing does take some time to do. Let me, this is gonna take quite a while. Let me actually go to doo -doo -doo, doo -doo, this one. All right, so I just wanna show you that I have an example here and I'm happy that I do. So let's say I have this file, okay? I can click on here, I can click app.py, start chat. Oh, it's still indexing. <laughs> That's not good, that's gonna take a bit of time. Alrighty, here is another demo I did. See, this is why I do demos multiple times. So I can attach this, I can start a chat. Great, so this one is index. Indexing just takes a bit of time. It's it's like, you know, giving Copilot the, the repository so that it understands what's going on. But if you are assigned to review this PR, you can say, um, what does this file do? 
I mean, you can actually ask it a lot more intelligent questions than that. Like if you're, you know, if your application is a lot more complex, but then it's going to go ahead and tell me this is a Python script that uses Streamlit library to, you know, analyze the application for flight data. Awesome. Something else that I love to do on github.com as well is what we call knowledge bases. And so I'm going to switch my account real quick. Let's do it, so let's switch. It doesn't want to work. Let's do it. There we go. And so let's say, uh, where is nose nose? Awesome. So let's say, you know, like a lot of times we're given repositories and we're told, hey, you know, you need to build a UI. If you're like a front end developer, build a UI for this um, API. And you're just like, oh, wow, what is this back end? I have no idea what it does. You can use GitHub Copilot on github.com, enterprise feature, but you can use GitHub Copilot on github.com to get up to speed with what your app, with uh, what your repository is. So I can click here. And then you're looking at uh, README and you're seeing, okay, so it's gonna provide personalized fragrance recommendation. It's using the Canon algorithm. All right, but what even is the Canon algorithm? Let's say you're unfamiliar. I can go in here and I can ask two question. I can say, where is the KNN algorithm used? And what is the KNN algorithm? The response will filter due to prompt not being programming related. No, please. Let's let's try this again. Let's start a new chat. I'm going to copy this. Let's start a new chat and let's ask it again. Okay, so it's not quite working. Let me try a different interface. I can take this to an immersive conversation and I can say, Again. All right, it looks like we're going to get somewhere. OK, so it's saying that the Canary Stamers algorithm is used in the recommend fragrance.py file. All right. And it's also used in in a notebook. Awesome. So I can click on the link here that it provided me with. Let's just wait for it to generate. Okay, and it also told me what the K-Nearest Neighbors algorithm is. I was wondering if it would do that. That's awesome. So I can click on this file. It pops up here in an immersive situation and I can go through it, right? Something else I can do is attach what's known as a knowledge base. So I can attach GitHub's open source design system called GitHub Primer. And I can say, okay, I want to build a UI for this API. So um, I can ask a very specific question about Primer because it's familiar with it. I can say, should I use text area or text input? to receive the user's favorite fragrances. And it should give me contextual information relating specifically to the primary repository, the internal primary repository. Okay, the choice between using a text area and a text input depends on the expected nature of the user input. So if I expect to use a single line of text, I can use text input if I multiple lines of text. OK. OK, it gives me an example here from primer design that I can look at to see. All right, maybe I should go ahead with text area because I, I will need like multiple lines of text. So I can say, OK, show me how to implement primer text area. And it should give me like an example, but I do like how it gives me these reference points that I can just go straight to. 
uh, to solve the problem I'm trying to to solve instead of like combing through everything. And here it says, okay, here's an example of how you can use text area from primer to get this done. And this is GitHub Copilot on github.com, right? So if you want to learn more about how to use GitHub Copilot in your IDE or even in your editor, I encourage you to explore all the features that are available to you because the best way to make the most out of GitHub Copilot is to know all the features that are available to you. I have some resources on the GitHub blog that you can read to get to, you know, understand like unexpected things you can do with GitHub Copilot and also learn like best practices, some additional tips and tricks that I've shared in, in these two blog posts. If you go to gh.io forward slash streamlit, you can go to the demo repository and try out this demo for yourself. Maybe try out learning about a new open source repository, like start using an open source repository on your own. I hope you learned something today. If you have questions, you can find me everywhere online at it's that lady dev